Um, you talked a little bit about checkpoint inhibitors and immunotherapy as new target, you know, immunotherapy is used for everything. Can you tell us a little bit more about immunotherapy being used in these kind of cancers? Right, so uh, let's talk about squamous cell, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma first. It has the highest tumor mutational burden of any cancer in the cancer genome atlas, many times higher than melanoma, which is sometimes compared as it has somewhat of a higher tumor mutational burden, but, but squamous cell carcinoma of the skin is much higher than so these that. These are really hot tumors. Uh, well, in terms of tumor mutational tumor burden, burden, which yeah. could generate a lot of neoantigens, mm -hmm. and in other cancers, the higher tumor mutational burden has been associated with increased response. Uh, and then interestingly, basal cell carcinoma has an even higher tumor mutational burden, but it's not part of the cancer genome atlas, so not everybody's aware of that. And the thought is, again, that higher tumor mutational burden is associated with better response, so it makes uh, at least squamous cell and, and, and perhaps basal cell very good targets. And the literature in squamous cell, the, here at ASCO, the, the uh, releases just in uh, today and uh, two days ago uh, are confirming that we're not only seeing good point estimates of response, but we're seeing indications of better durability of response. So referring back to our discussion of uh, standard chemo and uh, epidermal growth factor receptor targeted agents, they typically uh, don't have as high of response rates, but more importantly, besides the point estimates response, they just don't have long durations of response, progression-free survival, overall survival, and then what we're seeing so far in the data uh, with uh, anti-PD-1 is that they do have more durable responses. And then the other issue about that is the uh, standard chemotherapy and uh, epidermal growth factor receptor agents have tolerability issues, as we know. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, anti-PD-1 agents, such as imipolumab, tend to have, uh, most patients have better tolerability day by day. Of course, there's risk for immune-related adverse events, which can be serious or life-threatening. But the day-by-day -day tolerability with the majority of patients is good. Most of the reported uh, more frequent uh, adverse events, more in the constitutional, some fatigue, maybe some GI complaints and so on, but nothing uh, severe in most cases. And I know you led the study which was, uh, you know, which was presented, published in the New Journal of Medicine. Could you tell us a little bit about the study about the patient population, response rates, uh, yes. durability of response, and any so, follow-up from there? Yes, so the patients, uh, so we'll go back to phase one uh, trial of uh, simiplumab. This was uh, a, uh, a dose escalation initial part of the study that was open to patients with multiple solid tumor types. During that dose escalation phase, a patient with advanced CSCC was found to have a, a durable complete response. And that led to expansion cohorts in the phase one trial that were exclusively for uh, locally advanced and metastatic CSCC. And uh, favorable results from those expansion cohorts led to the development of the pivotal phase two registration trial, of which I was involved and uh, had leadership role. And can you tell me a little bit uh, about, uh, do you have any follow-up from that trial and everything? Do you see durability of these responses like we see these other checkpoint inhibitors or do they stop responding after some time? And when did you stop giving the checkpoint inhibitor? Was it like a two-year point or do you continue right. to give them? So the trial, the phase two trial was designed to give uh, people treatment for uh, uh, two years. And then if after one year they had a complete response, they had the option of stopping active therapy and going on ex uh, follow-up. It's a very common question to ask now that we have an agent that's uh, released for you know, a commercial use, how long should we keep patients on? And there's not really a known answer to that. I've seen people respond rather quickly. We know the, the median time to response is 1.9 months. And so the majority of patients respond you know, starting at two or three months. In the uh, group two locally advanced patients, it was uh, uh, out of the 34 responders shown on a swimmer's plot, seven patients had a more unconventional, slower response. So instead of starting at two months, those 20% those of responders had responses ranging anywhere between six and 10 months. And that's important because when people start patients, you know, there might be a temptation to say, well, I've given the patient a few months and I don't see anything changing. 
but what if they were to be, say, one of those unconventional later responses out of, say, it could happen 20% of the time, you wouldn't want to take the treatment away without making sure that the patient really won't respond, and it might take longer to decide if that's, if that's the case. So one of the checkpoint inhibitors worked well. Uh, what about other trials uh, utilizing other checkpoint inhibitors in this space? So in addition to semiplumab, there's pembrolizumab uh, trials. There's a keynote uh, 629 that uh, has finished enrollment, but there hasn't been a data release yet. There's the CARSKIN study of 39 patients. Uh, they did a much earlier five-week uh, assessment and the ob objective uh, response rate was around 38 something percent, and the disease control rate was in the low 50 percent. And uh, that's a small study, so it's hard to compare to a larger multicenter study, uh, and, and we really don't know yet. There's no head-to-head -head comparisons, but certainly that would be the other agent that is being tried in advanced uh, CSCC. What about patients who've uh did not respond to immunotherapy or had a response but stopped responding? Are there any resistant mechanisms? Like with some other trial, you know, there are other checkpoints like 3 tim 3 which are right. in, in the works. Are, is there any uh, research going on in that, uh, in that avenue? Yes, actually combination therapy, as we know, say from melanoma treatment, uh, will be uh, more prevalent as time goes on, I believe, and there's already a, a trial combining uh, uh, semiplumab anti-PD-1 with the LAG-3 agent. There's also a trial of uh, RP1, which is a modified herpes virus oncolytic uh, vaccine in combination with semiplumab anti-PD-1. The thought there is that uh, these anti-PD-1 agents take the brakes off the immune response, right. so to speak, that the tumor can put the brakes on, so the agent takes the brakes off. But you might think, well, how revved up is the immune response itself? What are you taking the brakes off of? So if you give an oncolytic virus and it quote unquote revs up the immune response and then you take the brakes off, the hope is that you can get a better response than just having the brakes taken off and regardless of how much uh, immune stimulation there is in the tumor. So more like an additive or synergistic, hopefully yes. synergistic approach yes. uh, to tackling, uh, tackling this, uh, this cancer. What about basal cell? Uh, you said basal cell had a better, you know, more tumor, higher tumor, tumor mutational right. burden than cutaneous squamous cells, what kind of research is going on in basal cell with checkpoint inhibitors? Right, so there is a, a trial, uh, a phase two trial of uh, semiplumab with uh, uh, advanced basal carcinoma, both locally advanced and metastatic. The locally advanced cohort has filled, the metastatic cohort is still open. Uh, we don't have results yet. So the fact that the tumor mutation burden is higher in basal carcinoma may or may not make a difference in terms of efficacy. And uh, as has been discussed by some of my colleagues, that basal carcinoma has a different tumor architecture than squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, there's a potential that the basilar cells form some sort of barrier, and we know that there are these, uh, these uh, clefts that can occur around basal cell carcinoma. So whether that plays a role in the response uh, is unknown at this time, but it's certainly an area that could be investigated further. So very interesting because it may have a higher tumor mutational burden, more antigen load, but it might not be as responsive because of the tumor microenvironment or something is going on in the basal right. cell which would give it a less response. And this is speculation, but mm -hmm. this has been comments by some of my colleagues that do a lot of the uh, skin oncology research. Right. What about uh, topical agents like topical hedgehog inhibitors? Right. Are there any topical inhibitors out there? Well, Which yes, and actually there have been agents tried in the past and nothing was approved and the thought was that there were penetration issues. So there is an agent, Petitigib, that is uh, a topical 2% gel. It's been studied previously in the UK and found to have uh, good efficacy both, in, uh, efficacy both in reducing the uh, numbers of new lesions as well as the size of new lesions. Uh, so we have a phase three trial that's opening in the U.S. Actually, it's open already in the U.S. and uh, we are one of the sites and should be opening our site soon.